currently known as Zan True Luck. This is my black beret. This is my glass of red wine. And this is my painting, Scars and Stripes. So this is the second of my Friday fireside chats live from my backyard. And I wanted to do these to be very intentional and in, in showing you the intentionality behind my artwork, actually. So uh, I'm even intentional down to the fact that I wore a sillier fit today because of how heavy the content is in the artwork. And um, the, the artwork itself is going to be striking, and I think I, I oftentimes feel like how I represent it on Instagram is not great enough, so I wanted to make sure that you all got the impact of my thought behind it. So Scars and Stripes was something I created in 2015. It was 2015, not long after the death of Eric Garner, which was 2014. Shortly a month after Eric Garner's death was Mike Brown's death. There were countless others in that time period, and even preceding that, I mean, you can go back to Sean Bell, Amadou Diallo, even before that, but this brutalization of the black body by excessive force from police officers, and that brings us to present day, where the work is still exceptionally relevant and scarily so with what just happened to George Floyd. So I even shifted gears in what I wanted to talk about this week, just so I can be in this moment and recognize the struggle that we're still in which we're still engaged and something that we're still having to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis as a black people in a black culture so the work itself um the the idea and influence behind it was it was heavily influenced by Nas's in album which was actually the n-word i don't say the word we won't get into that here but um he renamed it in and between that album the album's cover actually had a picture of Nas with his hands behind his back I believe I, actually no I think his hands were down to the side but he had lashes on his back lashes from a whip in the shape of the letter N and the, the album cover itself was meant to be striking but the image always resonated with me and I'm pretty sure it was borrowed from that image of the, the black slave late 1800s I believe where they had a, a picture of a former black slave sitting on the chair with his back turned and all the little lashes for slavery and it's just a lasting reminder so when I went into this piece, I was thinking of how the police brutalization of the black body is legitimately a lasting reminder of slavery, a lasting reminder of the hatred that they have for us, a lasting reminder of the system in play that is continuing to oppress us and legitimize the power to murder and execute us. So when you deal with heavy concepts like that and just think about this flag, and Nas had a lyric in that album, Betsy Ross sold the first American flag, I bet she had a black person with her to help her old ass and just even thinking about that like the fabric of this country is made up of the blood of our ancestors the tears of our ancestors our hard work any cotton item was stained with our blood from picking it and just thinking about how much we are a part of the fabric that literally wove this nation and wove this flag if wove is even a word weaved <laughs> um and then thinking about the stars that go on top of that and the shield that they're hiding behind with stars and that being the different cop badges so again with so many different things happening at one time sips my wine with so many different events happening at one time with these police officers brutalizing black bodies freddie gray sandra bland the list just unfortunately went on and continues to go on today i thought it was important to represent different badges so I didn't want it to seem like it's just from one locale. It's the authorized police force across the entire nation, policing our neighborhoods and policing what the black body can and can't do. We don't have the afforded luxuries of people who are not black to just even be in the presence of a police officer without having fear stricken in our hearts. I clam up when I drive and I've done nothing wrong whatsoever. I've never been arrested in my life, thank God. And when I look at, and I've been stopped many times, I've been stopped and frisked walking through New York on my way to work, getting patted down. I've been pulled out of cabs at nighttime because there was a suspect who robbed a cab that looked like me, which means just black, of course. So when we think about how all of these different police forces are actually using force against our body, I couldn't help but think about putting that into this work. Back to me never being arrested before. This is actually a self-portrait in a regard, and this is me posing for it. And I pray that I never have to do this position in front of someone who has authorized power to shoot me. Uh, I guess the last thing I really want to talk about here is kind of the period of my artwork. So this painting 
was in 2015, I was just really starting to dabble in acrylics. I had never really worked with acrylic prior to. I did one painting, America Eats His Babies, which will make it into a chat eventually. And my execution just wasn't as sharp as I wanted it to be because I'm an oil painter by nature or by trade and schooling. So this was my first time where I really felt like I was getting the application of acrylics. Like I was able to make it move across the canvas and flow in the way that I needed it to. The, the way that I was able to get highlights and differentiation to actually raise the scars off of the back, to mirror the stripes of the scars and stripes flag here. I just felt like I was finally getting my way with acrylic. And this is also the largest piece I've ever done to that time, up until that date. So it's a 30 by 40 canvas, whereas typically I was working 18 by 24, 24 by 36. I just felt like the expanse and the breadth of this pose and the weight of it needed to actually be life size legitimately. So. Lastly, I think I'll, I'll cover just the fact that I wanted it to have a strong light source on it because I really wanted it to look like essentially a police lineup. When you stand in front of in front of a lineup for your mugshot and you're standing in front of those stripes and that light is shining on you, I wanted it to be reminiscent of that as well. Just the thought of where we are as a black as black people in this country and have been for most of our life. It's just a new legitimized way to enforce and police our bodies and tell us what we can do. So we arrive at present day, we arrive at George Floyd, we arrive at once again seeing an execution of a black individual at the hands of a police officer, at the knees of a police officer. And it's just one of those things where the only way I can work through it is through art. I'm not even going to go forth with many more statements about George because it's still so tender and it's been so raw for me all day to the point where I had to take off of my job today because I just couldn't. Couldn't fill in the blank. I couldn't work. I couldn't focus. I couldn't exist in a space with these feelings that I was sitting with over what we're seeing right now. So uh, again, I was, I'm Zan True Luck, or the artist currently known as Zan True Luck. This is my glass of wine. This is my piece, Scars and Stripes.